Do you have a dream and you've been trying to figure out how to make it come true forever? Like maybe your dream is just to learn to paint or write a book or cook or, I don't know, sit in a chair in silence and watch the birds fly by or to travel more or just spend time with the people that you love or start a business. Well, I'm here to tell you that I had a dream and I made that dream come true by going mobile. I gave up my sticks and bricks life and my corporate job, and now I live in my 25 foot B plus RV. And if you guys have been watching me, you know that for about the last 30 weeks, I've been doing a series of YouTube videos called Be a Nomad, Change Your Life, where I've been giving you every tip and trick and tool that I know that can help you guys hit the road full time. And today, I'm gonna give you a recap of all of those videos so you have the tools in one place. Hey everybody, it's Robin with Creativity RV, and welcome to the final Sunday episode of Be a Nomad, Change Your Life. If you've been watching this series since the beginning or have just seen a couple, you might know that this series gives you all kinds of tips and tricks, like how to work out your budget, what rig is right for you, how you find water, if you're gonna boondock, how you get your power. But it's also been going over things like loneliness, do I need a tribe? Will I actually be happier? when I hit the road? Are relationships possible? I wanna give you a quick recap of those things, but I also want to tell you today why I think being a nomad is a real solution for a lot of people out there, and this is a unique time in history. It's the first time ever that doing this kind of thing has even been possible. So let me start here. You might ask yourself, what's a nomad? A nomad refers to a person or a group of people historically or culturally that move from one place to another. They don't have one consistent domicile. They move for fresh pastures or for work or for food or for water or something like that. Well, think about this. We can be nomads now because we have great recreational vehicles and vans. We have great policy, at least in the U.S., that allows us to camp for free on a lot of public lands, like I tell you about in my series. And the technology now is available that we can do jobs anywhere. So if you can figure out how to make a living from an RV or a van or a camper, then you can take that show on the road. Why haven't we been able to do this in history before? Because we've been kind of shackled to our jobs, right? I don't know if you guys are around the same age I am. You might remember a Johnny Cash song that talked about selling your soul to the company store. You know, 16 tons and what do I get? Another day older and deeper in debt. When I went into corporate America, I kept thinking, I just went into terrible debt to buy a house in the neighborhood where my job is so I can work at the job, so I can afford the house in the neighborhood where the job is. And then of course, there's the credit card bills and everything else that goes into our regular sticks and bricks life. And that's great and it builds our society and it is for most people. But for me, I felt a little bit shackled. I felt a little bit chained down by that because it just felt like this perpetual consumer cycle where I was just working to afford to work and I wasn't getting anywhere. And housing prices are crazy, you guys. I mean, something like 45% of a person's income is spent on housing if they're in their first 10 years of work. And for everyone else, it's about 30%. That's a lot of our income. I think I read that for um, millennials, it ends up being like $90,000 they spend in their first 10 years on rent. And if you go mobile, you don't have that expense. I mean, for me personally, I don't have a house payment. I don't have a car payment. That is all taken care of already because I have my RV. If you're watching this video, then you're probably already aware that so many people in the U.S. are full-timing now in their RVs or their vans. But I just saw a survey from the RV industry that said that one million people now are full-timing um, in their recreational vehicles. And I have to tell you, the last statistic I saw, which was about six years old, I believe, said it was 400,000 people. So a lot of people are doing this, and I know some of you are gonna comment, shh, stop telling people about this. Everyone's gonna do it and we're gonna run out of space. Look, I'm gonna put the playlist for this series down below, like I said. But if you go into the boondocking BLM National Forest Camping videos, I give you graphs 
from the government agencies that show you what percentage of this country is used for free recreation. And it's huge. I like to say it's like when you fly over the country in an airplane and you see all that open space. A lot of that is available for you and me to recreate on for free. Now you can do that if you want to be a nomad or you can go to a long-term area and stay for six months or you can be in an RV full-time in one place. Or you can go from an RV park to an RV park or maybe a state park if that's what you like. None of us are going to do this the same. And like a lot of you, I have lost people that did not make it to retirement age. And I didn't want to look back and be sorry that I had not done anything. And then all of a sudden I got sick or, you know, I died and I didn't get to see the country and I didn't get to write those books. And so for me, living in an RV has been the solution. Now, there are some moving parts to this. And when I was studying this, I watched a lot of nomads on YouTube and I read a lot of blogs and I got books, but they didn't filter it down in a way that I wanted to see the information. That's why in this series, I've been giving you the why, how, and where of living an RV life. You don't have to have the same rig or budget or schedule as anybody else. If somebody else might go down an old dirt road and boondock, you don't have to do that if you don't want to do that. You're going to find the style of camping that works for you. You kind of have to get on the road to figure it out. It takes about a year, but believe me, you can find your own style and your own groove in a nomadic life. The second biggest thing is budget. In my budget video, for me, what I found worked the best was I didn't want to be in debt. I didn't want to bring that stress with me in that same cycle of debt and debt payments into my nomadic life. My first step was to pay off my debt. It's not easy, you guys. I know a lot of us out there are in debt. It took me a few years. I did it while I was researching this life. So in total, it took me about four years. It's not easy, but I did that. So I paid off my debt and then I purchased the rig I could afford without a payment. For you, it's gonna to be totally different. This is what I did. But if you go to my blog at creativityrv.com or to that video, I actually have the spreadsheet that I use that shows how much I spent on gas, parking, propane, food, etc. The next thing you might be wondering is, what kind of a rig is right for me? Well, everything's a trade-off in a mobile life. So you might think you need a really big rig because you want to bring a lot of stuff with you or your job requires a lot of stuff. Or you might be thinking you really want to be nimble and you want to be able to go into cities, so a van might be for you. I'll tell you that almost everybody I've interviewed changes their mind on what kind of a rig they want after about a year. I have a 25-foot RV, and um, there are some bells and whistles in that RV that I just don't need. I think about downsizing all the time, but we'll see what happens. Just know that there are a ton of options out there, and you don't have to get it right the first time. If the mobile life is for you, Try it out, you can switch rigs down the road. Along that same line, you don't have to be mobile forever. I know that there is this idea that you go full time and that's it and you never go back to the sticks and bricks. And if you do, you're a poser. And if you're a part-timer, you're a poser. Well, I don't think that that is necessarily fair because life changes. You might be able to hit the road now, but maybe then somebody in your family becomes sick. You have to go home or, you know, you have a kid or you have a job opportunity or you just get tired of the road and you go back home and then maybe you go back out or maybe you go part-time whatever you want to do is totally up to you so you figure out what rig you're going to start with you figure out your budget you might need to figure out how to make a living there are all kinds of ways to make a living on the road you can work seasonal job work camping jobs camp host jobs or if you have a certain skill set, you can be a digital nomad, which you just do with a cell signal. I'm doing a whole series of those jobs, so stay tuned for that. Then you might be wondering what your camping options are. I used to think that it was only a bunch of old people like packed into a parking lot when I saw RV parks. What I didn't know is that 45% of all the RVs that are being sold in the U.S. are to younger people. I see retirees out, but most of the time I see younger people. I'm usually in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and a lot of solo people and a lot of solo women. Depending on your budget and your preference for camping, there are so many options out there. Personally, I boondock a lot. 
I have people ask me, what is boondocking? Well, there's a whole video on that in the series, but basically it means you're camping without a hookup, which means you're not plugged into electrical or water. Um, you're dry camping, right? So maybe you have solar. You bring all your food and water with you. You pack everything in and you pack everything out. The good thing about this is that it's mostly free. You can do it on BLM land and National Forest land and all kinds of other places. All that information also is in the playlist. And you might be wondering if you're going to be happier when you hit the road. And look, being on the road is just life. I did some research on this and you're going to have your regular level of happiness. And then after you're on the road for about three months, things start to get a little hard. There's a lot to learn. You dip down in your happiness, but then you go right back up to where you were before and you're just you. And wherever you go, there you are. So will you be unhappy or will you be happier? Well, you'll probably be just you, just like you were in your old life, but you're going to have more opportunities, maybe, to do the things that you wanted to do. Like maybe you wanted to read every great novel ever written in a camp chair in front of a campfire. Well, you can do that if you're a nomad. You also might be wondering things like, where do I get water and where do I get propane? And how do I conserve energy if I'm out boondocking? There's all the information you need on those things in the videos. In addition to this series, I'm also working on kind of a resource guide for you guys, so stay tuned for that. My goal here is to put all the information into one place for you so that you can weigh all of the options and look at the logistics and really know if this life is for you or if it isn't. You might see me sitting in front of a campfire and think, wow, that looks really great and I wish I could do that. And you might see me and go, oh, hell no, that's not for me. But that is not reality. That's just a snippet of my life. What I wanna do is give you like a global perspective, a basic perspective of the life, all the things it takes to travel and move and find stuff and get things done and live a real life. And that was the goal of this series. Every video is going to be below by title. So if there's something that resonates with you, click on it, it will take you over there. And then each of those individual videos has all the links that you need. Is this life for everyone? No, it isn't. But I think it is for a lot of you out there. And my goal here was to give you everything you needed to try it out and hit the road. I can tell you that I've just passed a year and a half. It's the best thing I've ever done. When I watched YouTube videos, I would think, is that real? Is it possible? Can I do it? And I'm telling you guys, I was not a camper and I did it. Please do like this video, if you do, um, because it helps other people discover this channel and this series. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. Keep watching because I've got some more stuff coming up in the future that I think you're gonna like. I wish you all happy, happy travels out there. Shake off your chains and be free.